Welcome to Scene of the Crime. I'm investigative reporter, author, and historian Scott Bernstein. And today we're in Franklin Township at the corner of Franklin Road and 13 Mile on McKinney Street. And right now I am standing in front of what might be a mysterious mob murder weapon graveyard. And one of the weapons that could be resting in the backyard of this private residence could be the gun that killed Jimmy Hoffa. If you're from the state of Michigan or from Detroit, you're obviously familiar with the Jimmy Hoffa disappearance and murder. It's the most iconic unsolved crime in American history and definitely the most speculated upon and notorious unsolved murder in the history of the state of Michigan and the city of Detroit. Jimmy Hoffa was the world famous Teamster boss who disappeared on July 30th, 1975, three miles up the road at Bloomfield Plaza in the parking lot of the old Marcus Red Fox restaurant. Hoffa was on his way to a mob sit-down. He was supposed to meet with Detroit mob street boss Tony Giacalone, New Jersey mob lieutenant Tony Provenzano, and Tony Giacalone's right-hand man, little Lenny Schultz. The house behind me was the house that little Lenny Schultz lived in on July 30th, 1975, the afternoon that Hoffa vanished off the face of the earth, and we've been talking about it ever since. When Hoffa showed up for his lunch meeting at 2.30 that day, there was nobody to be found. Tony Giacalone and Lenny Schultz were at 11 Mile and Evergreen on the Traveler's Towers at Schultz's Southville Athletic Club. Giacalone used the athletic club as his day-to-day -day headquarters throughout the 1970s. Lenny Schultz was an old Purple Gang affiliate that dated all the way back to the, the last days of Prohibition. He ran errands for the old Jewish mob, the Purple Gang, and then eventually segued into the Detroit Italian Mafia orbit. By the 1960s and 70s, he was with Tony Giacalone almost every day. Tony Giacalone and his brother, Billy, were the Detroit mob street bosses, the guys that ran the Tocco's early crime family on a day-to-day -day basis on the street. Lenny Schultz not only was the owner of the Southland Athletic Club, he was also a well-known labor racketeer, and he served as a liaison between the Giacalone brothers and Jimmy Hoffa. He was their go-between. Over the last couple years, Sources and informants have been telling investigators and reporters that Lenny Schultz was responsible for burying murder weapons from infamous Detroit Italian crime family slains. That there are possibly over two dozen guns and knives that are resting underneath concrete slabs in the backyard of this private residence. Schultz hasn't lived here for 40 years, but the owner of this residence, when he moved in a couple years ago, was surprised to find that in his backyard, there were over a half a dozen random concrete slabs peppered across the property. Now, we're unsure if the FBI or Michigan State Police will ever search back there. And if they do, there's no guarantee they'll be able to match the, any weapons that they find to the Hoffa homicide. Now, little Lenny Schultz's residence was no stranger to being pulled into murder investigations. A year before Hoffa disappeared, the FBI believes that local furniture magnate Harvey Leach, who owned the very trendy Joshua Door furniture franchise, was murdered here when he came to attend a meeting with Tony Giacalone and Lenny Schultz dealing with the sale of the business. Schultz and Giacalone, according to FBI informants, were trying to push Harvey Leach out after the Giacalone's had given him a loan to expand the business via an introduction by Lenny Schultz. The FBI was convinced at that time that Harvey Leach was murdered here when he was called to a meeting by Lenny Schultz to meet Tony Giacalone. Harvey Leach's body was found in the trunk of his car in Southfield on his wedding day in March 1974. There are still a lot of questions to be answered in the Jimmy Hoffa investigation. Only time will tell if one of those questions can be answered in the backyard of this residence. I'm Scott Bernstein for Click on Detroit and Local 4 Plus.